Yeah. 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 Hey there YouTube, this is going to be a bit of an odd video. I'm here talking not about creationism per se, or any particular point of fact in science. Instead, I'm going to be talking about something I've noticed a few people don't understand. Now, I know most of my audience will already know this, but pseudoscientists and their followers tend to at least act like they do not. Academic fraud involves a deliberate effort to deceive and includes plagiarism, fabrication of data, sources, tampering with evidence, selective suppression of unwanted or unacceptable results, and theft of ideas. But note, this is not an exhaustive list. Basically, anytime you present your work in a way that is not honest, you have committed academic fraud. Now importantly, this is not the same as criminal fraud. It may sometimes overlap though. So if a doctor wrote a case study about their patient who died as a result of malpractice, but changed the facts of the case to avoid the appearance of malpractice, that is academic fraud, and use of it, say, in a way promoting a treatment that did not work, probably would be criminal fraud too. Although academic fraud is a serious matter and there should be a high burden of proof to demonstrate it, that burden can be met. So what would some examples be of academic fraud that you might encounter right here on the internet? Well, if you published a paper but made it look like it had been published by a peer-reviewed scientific journal by adding the name of the journal to the top of your paper, that would be academic fraud. If you were to dishonestly edit someone else's video to give the impression that they were lying about having read a book when in fact all that had happened is that you spliced footage from before they had read it dishonestly so that they appeared to be lying, that would be academic fraud. If you were to say, be shown to be wrong, but rather than issue a correction or a public retraction, you instead did a stealth edit of your video to cut out the offending bits, all without telling anyone, that would be academic fraud. Let's say you were presenting yourself as an expert in primate and human anatomy, but you kept calling Australopithecus Australiopithecus, and you think there's such a bone as the tibula. Well, you're clearly in a field where you know nothing, so passing yourself off as some kind of authority is academic fraud. If you were to say make a video or an informal research document that said that isopods are trilobites, or that Cetacosaurus was a parrot, it's either academic fraud or extreme negligence. If you were to say state at the outset that your conclusion has been reached before the data are in, and that nothing can change your conclusion, that's academic fraud. If you knowingly sign off on a paper demonstrating that the end Cretaceous lance formation could not have been formed in a global flood, and then later claimed it was formed in a global flood without ever retracting your support for that paper, that would be academic fraud. If you were to present yourself as a lecturer on dinosaurs in the Bible, but couldn't tell someone what a dinosaur is when it's put to you, that would be academic fraud. So what am I getting at? Well, first in academia in general, including the sciences, history, etc., honesty and openness are paramount. You don't have to be right, but you have to be open about your sources, your opinion, and when you find out or even think that you're wrong, you don't sneak around and make it seem like you were never wrong at all. You admit it. That's why on many of my videos, the pinned comment is one or more corrections I have made for an error. Why don't I just cut out the error? Because that's dishonest. I made the error, I need to own up to it. Similarly, I don't knowingly say things that are incorrect, and I'm always open about my confidence level in what I'm saying. Academic integrity matters. Because it means that when people come to you for information, they know that at least you're not lying to them. And if you are mistaken, they can at least expect a correction if you become aware of the mistake. This is something we almost never see from pseudoscientists. In fact, all of my examples are from actual pseudoscientists or those who pretend to even reach that level. You probably know who some of them are. You probably know who some of them are, but I am not here to draw attention to dishonest actors. Just know this. When you come to a channel like mine or Gutsick Gibbon or Creation Myths, we will be open about the data, our conclusions, and most importantly, our mistakes. When you head over to a creationist or climate change denial or anti-vax channel, you can almost always guarantee that they are not, and that tells you something about who can deal with the actual data and thereby who has the actual science on their side. Sorry for this somewhat rambly video, but this kind of fraud needs to be called out, and I'm losing patience with people who claim to be seeking truth, reason, and evidence but who then go be dishonest little, well, you know. That's all for me for now. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. Thanks for watching, but before you go, I'd like to take a second to thank my patrons and channel members, especially those pledging $20 or above. Ben Hovind, Ian Chen, Sphincter of Doom, Chris Love, Henry Hutanen, and Bob Knob. 
Their support helps make this channel possible, because as you may know, YouTube is a very volatile platform, and they give this channel much needed additional stability. If you'd like to join the team, a link to my Patreon page can be found in the description, and you can join with the button right below this video on YouTube. Both groups of people get access to my special patron and member only Discord channel, links to new videos before I release them to the public, as well as a pretty direct line to me. They also often are asked to do things like vote on new video topics. If a monthly subscription isn't something that you'd like to do but you'd still like to help out the channel, I also have a Teespring store that has Dapper Dino merch, including mugs, blankets, pillowcases, shirts, all sorts of things. And if none of those things are for you, then please just remember to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and share the video. All of those things really do help the channel grow. Well, I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. <laughs> How would you tell it's a dinosaur? You first, first, first. How would you tell it's a dinosaur? Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know.